soft tissue on the face. Do you understand? The eye, the ear, the nostrils, the mouth. Biting the chin, the neck, the windpipe. Further down the body, if you end up on the floor, if clothing allowed, so heavy musculature and thick clothing can negate the bite. If you're grappling with some guy on the ground who's got a t-shirt on, then the bite's available. The nipple area of, the, of this high line is very fucking painful. That's just under the armpit. <coughs> inside, we're more delicate. So ripping fascia tissue inside the tricep and inside the thigh is painful, more so than outside. But you need to understand pain tolerance, right? Pain tolerance can be different in many people. So if somebody, you have somebody like a bodybuilder that's got low body fat and, and good muscles, it's more painful for that person than somebody that's chunkier, thicker skinned, let's say, a bit rotund. Because the re receptor sites for pain are deeper lying. So it's harder to get there. Plus adrenaline masks you to pain massively. So don't expect this kind of stuff to stop someone. That's not the idea of it. The idea of it is to move him to get to a better position so I can knock him the fuck out. So I'm going to enter with impact, rip and maim, and then finish with impact. Do you see how I'm maximising my efficiency? It's all right. Yeah. Right, so in terms of head target, that's where it is. Under here and here also. If you're on the ground, right, I mean, within Kinomotai is the art of biting and gouging, found in the Philippines. There's 140 targets on the body to bite and attack, including the genitalia. Right, now maybe in a situation of forced rape where the person's trying to force fellatio, bite the fucker off. But as a geezer, dick in the mouth is dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I aim on my target. Right, as well as you know it. Right, so that's an example, right, from here. If I was at close quarters, I could be preemptive or I could be reactive. He could grab me and slam me. As long as I can reach his head, I can do something. I can do it on the ground, I can do it seated. But here there's something that I'm doing. Working off the premise that I don't have room for a solid palm strike, I've probably got this much room. I'm just going to take my hand and just grip behind his fucking eyelids. I want to concussively hit this and rip behind his eyelids so I'm on there. And as I do that, I pull his head here onto it. So he's just getting this sudden black and concussive effect. From there, from behind his eyelids, I'm just going to rip down the face and then smash him with an elbow. So I start concussive. Main him and finish concussive. Do you see an example? Understand where this belongs. Real level 10 threat. This fucker's going to end me if I don't do this. And guess what? You ain't going to end me. So it's that. Do you understand where it belongs? Yeah. This yeah. is not for somebody to snitch your parking space. <laughs> <laughs> or cut you up the lights or something. I'm talking serious threat. So if you look at a normal, average, strong, aggressive male against a smaller female, unless it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but against the smaller female. Size, strength and aggression creates a disparity in threat, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. If he grabbed her and just slammed her against the wall, unintentionally he could hit her head on the wall and kill her. He could kill her by mistake. So if he throws her on the floor to impose his will against her in a sexual sense, understand that rape's not about sex, it's about power and domination. If she has the fucking right now to fight back, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking right, by whatever means. And if she fights back in this way, tooth and nail, it won't guarantee that she won't get hurt still, but it'll give her a massive high probability that she won't get fucking raped. And quite often it showed that women fought tooth and nail back against the sexual assault. Even if they ended up in hospital unconscious, they did not get raped. They did not get violated. Which means there was no black dog after. Do you understand a black dog? Mm. Well, I didn't do what I should have done. Why well, didn't I do it? I'm fucking scared and I didn't do nothing. She ain't got none of that shit. She fought as hard as she could, and she survived. Do you see what I'm saying? She prevailed. So you need that fight back mentality. But even with the fight back mentality, fight back mentality, you need to know how to fight, right? So I'm giving you an example of what I'm giving you. Yeah, so here is an example. If I smash this in the face, rip it down, and then smash him with an elbow. Another example might be I hit him with a chin jab, grab his lip, rip it off his face, and hit him in the groin. Now I'm finished this quick. So I can employ all of these kind of methods that take me from secondary tools back to primary weapons to fight more efficiently. Do you understand? Do you want to play or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give you a couple of drills. First drill we're doing a pack. All you're going to do is take this hand like you're holding a grapefruit, right? And from this unobtrusive position, your intention is to slam that 
right into this, dropping your weight. And as you do that, you want to pull him onto it to create a car crash collision type of effect. So your first motion, you attach, latch your nails onto this. From here, drop your body weight and just rip down. Hear it, rip down. Imagine you're trying to accumulate DNA on your fingernails. Got it? So on there, attach, then rip, and then put in the elbow. And because you're gonna put in a good elbow shot, give it two, finish the drill with man down. So it's like this, here, attach, rip, um, we try this? Yep. Or limbic system. So you're no longer thinking tactically or consciously. To make a decision, it's fucking difficult. Basically, in limbic brain, mid brain, reptile brain, whatever you want to call it, you are left with the intelligence of a dog. You know three things. You know fight, flight, or freeze. What you don't want to do is fucking freeze. But as soon as you act, you're primal. You're triggering the usage of the adrenaline, but you're still not tactical. How you train is how you operate, right? So the second from here that I'm really engaged into this, I know I want to rip and then I want to put this in. So when I put in the last shot, it's a good chance, particularly if I'm hitting him in the throat, he's down. So the last imprint that I want on in my head is man down, me exit. That would be ideal, right? So that subconscious image is in my brain now. So if I was ever called upon to deal with this situation for real, the only picture my subconscious has is a successful result. Whereas if you stay in there like a spare dick at a wedding, just holding the pad, not responding, he's done his thing, you fuck off and I'm still stood there. The only thing my subconscious brain will remember is, ah, you still stood there. Which means it doesn't work. Do you understand? Your subconscious mind will do whatever it can to talk you out of conflict. It's well-meaning, but it gets you fucked in. So you don't want to do it, right? So plug in how you intend to operate. You fuck with me, I'm pulling you down. That's my intention. Every training repetition that I employ will reflect that image in my head. So man down at the end, yes? Isolate and then transfer to different situations. The principle of having a game plan, of having some preordained set of strategies to work through. The principle of hitting first. Principle of grip, blitz, grip, continue to motor. The principle of blitz, man down, man down. The principle of covering the crashing inside. Other principles that we use, we haven't perhaps mentioned, the principle of high low. Hitting someone high, then transferring the next shot to low. Why? So the brain is catching up on where to isolate the pain to deal with it. So the hands are moving in a different direction. Lots of other principles that we use, but the system is principle driven rather than technique driven. And we should be able to articulate what we do in terms of the principles involved. We should be able to describe what we do in terms of the principles involved. There are others that I haven't mentioned, or Lee mentioned flanking, the idea of getting off to the side. So we'll be on the same train tracks going forward as that person, we'll be on the next set of train tracks as they go past. The principle I want to look at now is branching. First session I looked at one of contingency planning. What happens if I don't go first, he does. I'm going to look at another contingency plan. What happens if I'm doing something and for some reason it stops working? Either because I wasn't doing it well enough or because he did something to stop me from doing it. The definition of stupidity is doing the same thing when it fails, hoping for a different result. If I'm doing something and it fails, I don't want to keep doing it. I want to shift to something else. Like if I'm driving down the road and I see a roadblock, I don't want to just drive through it, I want to take a turn. And then if I find another roadblock, I'll take another turn until I get to my destination. So that's what I'm going to look at in the next 45, 50 minutes. The ability to transition from one skill to another, to another, to another, to another, to another seamlessly. The ability to do that indicates combative efficiency. If I get to a position where something's not working and I just keep trying it, I'm stalling. I'm not making forward progress. So I need to be able to transition. Imagine some idealized situation, movie, where the good guy, you know, kind of the born supremacist kind of thing, the good
good guys in the bar and he hit someone in the head to drop him. At that, that point, someone comes out of the side with a pull cue and immediately transitions, branches into dealing with that attack. Takes the pull cue off and smashes them, gets grabbed from behind, the pull cue goes flying, immediately transitions into an extreme close quarters situation, bites, gouges, gets <coughs> space, impacts, gets tackled from behind, goes to the floor. That's a, fucking bad day, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a night out. That is a night out in Nottingham. <laughs> the ability to transition seamlessly between skill sets is what we need. So I'm just going to give you a bunch of drills based on what we've done today. It's basically been drill based this out on things that we've done today. We're going to go back to what you started with. That idea of working from this natural unobtrusive fence position, as Jeff, Jeff Thompson calls it. From here. That first preemptive strike, where the first thing can go wrong. Okay? I hit him in the head. Boom! I do a result. He falls down. Job done. Control is descent. Job done. Lots of other common reactions to getting hit in the head. I hit him in the head, he staggers back, doesn't want any more. I break him psychologically, although I haven't broken him physically. Yeah. Doesn't want any more, walks away. Third reaction, I hit him in the head, he goes back, spits his teeth out, comes back and like the antichrist. Yeah. Fourth reaction, I hit him in the head, he drops, and I can exit. Another reaction, I hit him in the head, grabs hold of him. Yeah. Heavyweight boxers, right? 12 rounds, dancing with each other. So you don't get hit in the head. Final reaction, I hit him in the head and he covers it, which is what we do. Just hit him in the head, cover it. So if I hit him in the head, boom, and he covers his head, and I continue to hit him in the head, I'm having no effect. And at some point, he will wake up and go, fuck that, I'll do something else. He will tackle me to the floor. So the first thing we need to do is identify that we're stalled. And at this point in the process, tell you from experience, if you think that that first build up to combat when you're shaking like a leaf and your legs are like spaghetti, it takes a lot to get over that initial adrenal dump. The next time you will feel that adrenaline is when you feel like you're not having an effect. What you're doing isn't working. You get a sense of frustration, and you get what Jeff Thompson called the in fight adrenal dump. And you think, fuck, it's not working, you're going to eat me alive. Then we have to do something physically. So if I hit him in the head and he covers his head, I need to recognize that this isn't working. I need to do something else. I need to branch. The easiest thing in the world from here is just to clear the obstruction. <coughs> hit him again. <coughs> he's dead. So this is the first simple one we'll do. He's going to replicate this on a pad for me. I'm going to be here. This is his facial structure. This is his chest structure. My hands are going to be up. I'm going to be talking to him. <coughs> I'm going to hit this and I'm going to grab it and he's going to cover it. With the other pad, just like he's covering his head. When I see this position, I'm going to just take two fucking big meat hooks. Right, it's not fine motor at all. Two meat hooks, and just slam this out of the way. And then go back to what I was doing. And he's dead. Hit. I attach. He covers. Two meat hooks, drag it out of the way, go back to where you were. Nice and simple. We all did the first skill. So all my partner is doing is adding in this. Kendon, yeah. you go straight to this. Good. this more. And then he's going to transition to the knee for me. I'm going to go here. And again, this is ballistic. I don't want to take hold of him lightly. I'm going to hit him with this. Hit him with this and grab him. In goes the knee. Down the cuts. And then I'm making a decision. Is this person combative or not? Oh, he's not doing anything. I'm going. He's getting up again. Boom! Take his leg. Away we go. So the whole thing all the way through now. Add the cover. Go.
is I hit him, boom, I attach, I hammer, I get something on him. And at this point, when I'm trying to knee him, there's a common stall here. What I'm talking about, when my, I'll just drop those off for a second, when my head comes down, if I'm still conscious enough, he's trying to knee me in the head, the natural reaction is to try and stop him. Right? If I have enough consciousness, I'm not unconscious by this point, and I see that self-preservation will make him do so. He prays against his hips, put my arms out. And we get into this kind of head down, head up, trying to struggle. First saw it about the age of 14, Lee talking about straighteners, reminded me. A friend of mine had a uh, beef running with a kid at school for about a year. Eventually they agreed to meet on a Saturday. I went with him. We were much more honourable than they were, so if you bring one person, I went with him. And he brought his 30 mates. Um, <laughs> and uh, it taught me a lesson. But um, my mate got the upper hand. He hit this guy and he got hold of him and he had his head down. He had hold of his hair. He was trying to knee him. All this guy did was just block this out. He just kept doing this. And they got into this kind of struggle. And I'm thinking, hit the back of his fucking head. Right? Hit the back of his head. But the brain tells him at this point, you're not losing. But you're not winning either, but you're not losing. In other words, you're not dead, so just keep doing what you're doing. And eventually he got tired of holding his head down, and this guy eventually managed to straighten up, and they did something from here, and I make lost. He got pounded. He couldn't let go to hit something here, because he felt intuitively that if he let go of one hand, now he's no longer strong, this guy's going to pop up and punch his head. He's back to where he was, not in a position of, of advantage. So he was here. Quite common, see it a number of times down the years. So, the solution, what we're going to do from here, is to branch to something that you just did in the previous hour. I'm going to hit, boom, I'm going to attach, I'm going to give my hammers and my elbows. Now I'm going to go here, but he's not going to let me knee. When I knee, he's just going to meet my thigh, push here, and block me out. No thoroughfare. So I'm going to change it now. Well, I actually know what's coming there. <laughs> Once I'm here, boom, and I get blocked out. There's no straight line for me. So I'm going to go on to the next set of tracks across, next set of train tracks. I'm going to use his arm as my lever to pull me past him. He's a big solid lump. I'm pulling myself past him, and he ain't moving much. He's about the same weight as me. We're both moving so. Boom, here. After that, I can hit him. I just can push the chin room. Gonna use that headlock position. Boom, in here. Other hand coming in. Boom, here. And then after that, open the gate. Down it goes. Think about that. I get blocked out. Can't knee. Through the arms, yank him. Over the top, hit his head, headlock him, and then ping it open. just by focusing on the skills that we were already dialed in today, this preemptive striking, blitz attacking, and where that might run into a roadblock. Of course, we could look at other things, you know, multiple assailant joins in, someone with a weapon joins in from the side, all different things that require us to transition from one skill to another. And this is where the, this is where the, the training is at, right? Nothing ever comes to plan. So we need something that allows us to not stall, not get that second degree to continue motoring to get success. So we looked at uh, someone who covers their head, someone who uh, blocks out the knee, someone that tries to tackle us and we sprawl, someone that succeeds in tackling us and we roll them off the side, someone that we're administering some kind of beating to, everything is going well, and then they invite access to weapon. Any questions? Okay. Uh, that's me done. Let's give my pair. Thanks.
Thanks for giving up your party weekends, come and train with us, it's appreciated. See that good energy in the room, everyone's got a good work ethic, you know, I hope you all got something from it. So I understand where it belongs, the extreme, belongs at 10. Doesn't mean you need to take part at 10. Any part of what, what I'm giving you, what Dave's giving you, can work if the variables are in place. Just want to say a big shout out to Hodge for having us here. To Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Adam for coming and seeing us. Shout out to Dave, really fun. Come on, you didn't love me. Right, nice one. Can we get a photo? Yep. Yeah. Everyone?